So normally on this channel, we look at best practices when using JavaScript and TypeScript. But today we're going to take a step back and answer the question, what is TypeScript and why you would want to use it? Let's go. Now, as a developer that is planning to use TypeScript as a programming language, fundamentally TypeScript is two things. Syntax extensions for JavaScript that enhance the developer tooling capabilities and a compiler that converts this extended language back to JavaScript. So the main reason for TypeScript's existence is to help JavaScript developers. Now, JavaScript is a language that is not without its quirks, things that make you go, what? And it is not like JavaScript does not have the concept of types or runtime type exceptions. For example, if you go ahead and call a function that does not exist, you get a nice runtime exception, taking you exactly where you need to provide the fix. But let's go ahead and take a step back and look at the simple addition operator within JavaScript. If you go ahead and add two array items within JavaScript, a reasonable answer would be a concatenated array or even a runtime type exception. But instead, you get a string. And if you add an object to an array, a runtime type exception would be great, but instead you get a default two string representation of an object. And if you swap the order of the operands, that is object plus array, you get a number. Cause of course, why not? And finally, if you go ahead and add two objects together, you get the dual two string representation of the individual objects concatenated together. Now there are use cases for using the plus operator between items of different types. For example, when you want to concatenate a string with a number, it's perfectly fine. And it even works if the number is a negative value, for example, minus one. But even here, there can be cases that can trip up beginning JavaScript developers. For example, if you try to subtract a number, it's not the same as adding a minus one. And instead of giving us nice runtime exceptions, JavaScript happily chugs along, which can result in some pretty hard to debug runtime type issues. And that brings us to TypeScript. At its core, TypeScript is the full JavaScript standardized syntax. So you can happily just use JavaScript within the TypeScript programming language. And to prove that point, we can write the same JavaScript that we've seen within a TypeScript file, and it'll work perfectly fine. And even the examples that we saw as hazards within the JavaScript runtime will actually compile fine syntactically within TypeScript. However, because it has a built-in error checker, it will provide errors for these cases as they will not work effectively within the JavaScript runtime. So TypeScript can really be thought of as a safe version of JavaScript. At this point, I would expect any experienced software developer to wonder why they would want to use TypeScript instead of just plain JavaScript. Because after all, the examples that we've seen right now could easily be done just by the JavaScript syntax by adding a linter. And indeed, for such a simple case, you wouldn't need any additional syntax. But assume that you have two variables that you want to add. And if these two variables are immediately within scope, any good old linter as well as TypeScript will pick this up as a mistake. However, if some of these variables, for example, some tags are coming from a network request, the information of the type of the variable will simply not be present within your JavaScript code base. And at this point, in order to successfully lint such a piece of code, you would need to inform the linter of the type of this particular variable. And that's when the syntax extensions offered by TypeScript come into place we go ahead and annotate what this variable is going to be. And TypeScript is going to go ahead and identify any issues based on the type of this variable. And then someone who's new to JavaScript can do a quick Google or Stack Overflow search to find out the proper way to concatenate two JavaScript arrays. Another advantage of having well annotated code as offered by TypeScript is the ability to provide reliable developer tools. For example, go to definition, rename refactoring, and find references. So as we mentioned, at its core, TypeScript is the full JavaScript standardized syntax. But beyond that, it adds additional syntax to provide a complete compile time type system for your JavaScript code. And additionally, TypeScript provides APIs and command line tools to take this extended JavaScript and compile it down to a JavaScript that you can execute in JavaScript runtimes like browsers and Node.js. 
And because it has this capability to compile down to JavaScript, it even supports bleeding edge JavaScript syntax like the optional chaining operator and compiles it down to verbose but supported JavaScript code that even really old browsers like IE11 can execute. And it will even generate source maps so you don't have to debug the verbose JavaScript and can debug your TypeScript source code within your IDEs as well as your browser developer tools. And because it compiles down to plain JavaScript, you can run TypeScript on any browser in any operating system, basically wherever JavaScript is supported. And for a quick taste of TypeScript, you can head on over to the TypeScript Playground. Over here, I'm inputting just an index and annotating it as of type number. And you can see that in the output JavaScript emitted, the type annotations are removed. And because TypeScript is just JavaScript, I highly recommend that beginners use TypeScript instead of RawJS, as it can really hold your hand when you are getting started with JavaScript. So that's all for this video on what is TypeScript. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.